Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Dr. Erica Gonzalez and I am the chairwoman for the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women and representative of District 1. We are all excited to have you join us today as we experience this great panel spotlighting a special issue for us all. Our panel is going to discuss issues related to virtual learning and the challenges that many mothers are facing. We will hear about why it's so important to talk about mental health openly, especially during these COVID times. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women. Today, we are talking about women's mental health. This is the Women's Health Care Panel. My name is Vanessa Croy. I'm an anchor at Kins 5 here in San Antonio. I'd like to introduce our guests today. First of all, we have Mary Libby. She is the Director of Counseling at Northside ISD. Mary has been with Northside for 26 years. She spent one year as a Director of Counseling, but she spent 25 years as a high school counselor in the district. And before that, she was a teacher in another state. We're glad that she came here to be with us here in San Antonio. Our other guest is Dolores Haynes. She is a licensed marriage, uh, licensed marriage and family therapist. She's been doing that for 20 years. Right now, she's the clinical director for child and adolescent outpatient services at the Center for Healthcare Services here in San Antonio. And she spent her career working with children, youth, and families. Welcome, ladies. We're glad to have you today. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'll be the moderator for our panel today. Once again, our, our focus is women's health care, especially in the last year when we've all been, a lot of us have just been really struggling through this pandemic. Our, our normal days are completely turned upside down and we're learning how to navigate that. So uh, ladies, first of all, I know you guys have a lot of experience in, in men, women's mental health care, uh, but first we, I th I'd like to ask you, you know, what are some of the things you've been hearing and seeing uh, in the last year? Go ahead. Well, um, one of the things that we that that I hear a lot is that parents, families are they they really are not sure how to react to things that that their frustration tolerances are lower and they're having difficulty making decisions and parents really are um, wanting to make sure that they also have a sounding board or a support network of some sort because they're, they're not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been no map for this, right? Is one day everything's the way it's always been and then the next day it's not. And over the last year, we've, I've seen an incredible number of families figure out what needs to happen to just make it okay. It may not be perfect, but they're making it okay. And being in the school district, not only working with parents of our students, but staff members as well, and how to flip the job, how to flip the home, how to make sure that everything happens the way it needs to. You just hear a different level of stress. When we first started, it was almost fight or flight. And it's still a little overwhelming, I know, but families are in a different place. As with everybody, though, they're just ready mm -hmm. for the next part to go. Well, and one thing I wanted to ask you as well is, you know, initially it was finding that balance, like you just mentioned, but I think a lot of women are still finding that balance because perhaps their husbands are going back to work, they're going back to work, kids may still be learning from home. So how do you continue working through that balance? I... I prefer to use the word integration than balance. I don't think we can balance life. There's not an equal of this and an equal of that and an equal of that. And so if we think of integrating the pieces, kind of like the gears in a watch, right? They're different sizes, different weights, but they have to fit together and they have to make the clock work. And so um, just looking at what are the pieces that need to happen to make the next things happen, the dad, the husband, the significant others going back to work, I'm still at home. It's one more piece I need to take on. So what might have to give for me to do that? And I think what our families are going to be challenged with now is students have been home for a year and now school's opening back up. We want our kids back on the campus. We're hearing from moms a little bit of um, worry about I'm letting my kids go. They've been home for a year. And so that balance happens and they may go back into the workforce or they may continue working from home. <clears throat> so the identity too begins to shift, mm -hmm. you know, and now mm -hmm. I have to figure out another new identity in this role as mom. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, Dolores, let me ask you, I know we're talking about moms here, but a lot, there's a lot of single women or perhaps that have a significant other that they don't live with. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, and I've heard just a lot from my colleagues that, you know, you're in an apartment by yourself and you've been there and you don't have a family to come home to. So that isolation has been even more impactful because you are by yourself. Now, thankfully, somebody might have a pet like me. Uh, but, you know, how, how do you navigate through that? And, you know, a lot of people are still experiencing that. Well, I, I think a big part of that is making sure, especially when you live alone, to, to figure out a way to stay connected to your core group of people. Right. Whether that is through um, Zoom calls or FaceTime or phone calls or appropriately spaced um, outdoor activities, making sure that you, have, that you have built a network around you to allow yourself that time to vent your frustrations, to get that support, to help you make those decisions. And then when you're in your space by yourself, this is the, you know, a lot of people talk about self-care being the best thing ever, but I think in some ways because for, especially for those of us that have to work from home, home is work, home is school, home and home should be home where my, it should be my place of peace sure. and it's not. So set some, some, set some spaces and parameters in your own house. This is where I work. And when I leave this space, then, then I'm in my personal life or my social life. The, Zoom has <coughs> become our friend. Um, Zoom was acting up for me the other day and I said it was probably upset because I started using it last mm -hmm. year and I'd never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. But we've all become very friendly with Zoom and I agree is if I'm a single woman or I'm separated from my family is using that connection. I've been very surprised professionally and then also personally that connection can happen via that opportunity as well. And I think isolation has a tendency to tell us lies. You don't need anybody, you should, a lot of shoulds. You should be okay, you shouldn't be feeling this way. And I, you should be feeling what you're feeling. Um, but I like what you said too about going outside as the weather's getting better, is being able to appropriately distance and be okay that you wanna be around people. And I'm also wondering, you know, finding that peace sometimes takes a lot of courage for, for women because we all want to be super moms. We want to be super at our career and, and, and that's a, all that pressure, but you're also dealing with a completely different issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, I think it's starting that conversation. So how do we empower women to start acknowledging that they may be struggling through something? Ask the question and ask right. it again, right? The first question, I'm going to be polite. I'm fine, thanks, no problem. The second question with a little different tone may be exactly the vulnerability that's needed in that space between to say, yeah, it's not a good day. Mm -hmm. Or to mm -hmm. ask a specific question, what has it been like for you these last months? I know you live alone. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I, would, I absolutely agree with that. How, how have you been is, is almost too global of a question. Right. Yeah, get, get specific, what's it been like for you? Do you need anything from me? And sometimes that answer is gonna be, just be there if I need you, let's, or let's set up a regular, you know, a regular contact between the two of us. But absolutely asking the question, and if this is someone that you've been in, that, you know, that you've stayed in contact with and you hear things that start to be different, you hear that change in tone of voice, or the change in level of excitement, let them know that you know, right? and that, you're, that you care enough to ask. Hey, I've noticed that, you know, your voice seems really, you know, your, your voice seems really tired every time we talk. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Is there anything you want me to know? And I don't think it's always counseling coming from a counselor, right? Mm -mm. I, I don't know that necessarily that's where we have to start. Sometimes it's just about the conversation um, and just opening that door to be real. Um, I know during this time, my friend circle has shifted a little bit um, and individuals who I didn't think I had a connection with, that connection has shifted and so some of that is too just kind of branching out and going who else is out there. Um, I think you said Vanessa that you know we try to do it all we want to be it all professionally as the family um, 
and maybe you reach out from the perspective of, I'm going to organize some things. I'm going to be the one who's going to get us together. Um, because there's something about taking back some power. The pandemic took power from us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a temporary take, but it feels like it's forever. And being able to make decisions to do that gives you some of that empowerment back. I, do, I would like to ask you guys about, um, about moms in general because you know, I, I see my women friends that are trying to focus on their kids. Are my kids okay? Are yeah. they, how are they making it through this without stopping to take a minute saying, how am I doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, how am I making it through this? So what advice do you have for, that, for, for moms? I think for, for moms especially, because there is that expectation that mom is taking care, mom's taking care of the kids, she's taking care of the house, she's, she's working, she's doing all of these things. But I think if mom can look at, well, one, look at her mental health as mm -hmm. part of her overall health. If you are feeling mentally well, if you are not mentally tired, then you are a better person in the whole rest of your exactly. life. Exactly, yes. And also looking at the fact that if I, as a mom, am overwhelmed with everything and I'm having trouble making decisions for myself much less my family that that really can put us on a trajectory of of instability which I know is going to affect my kids mm -hmm. so if I as a mom can take some time some space in in my life to take care of myself mm -hmm. even if that means I'm taking my my end of day work routine if I'm working at home is I leave the house I walk around the block and then I come in the front door and now I'm home if I'm taking those little moments that are available to me to take care of myself then I am a better mom when things at when when zoom acts up for school or or when you know when we have just the regular family sibling rivalries that are going on I'm I'm better because I have taken that time for myself because I know that I've got people that depend on me to take care of them. And it's a role that we want, right? We're mom, the mom of the house. We don't have to change everything. It's one small, one small change. Decide one small thing you're going to do different. And I like that walk outside, walk around, walk down the driveway, come back in as mom's home. Um, and what we show our kids is what they're going to show back to us. So I don't, I'm not a, a fan of faking it. Uh, I think it's okay to be real with our kids, appropriately real. You know, mom's having a bad day today. There's a lot going on. And um, so, yeah, my heart's a little bit sad today, but we're going to work through this and we're going to move forward as a family. Mm -hmm. So also modeling how to talk about, I don't feel okay and it's okay that I don't. And we're going to move forward with that. Um, and what advice, that was my next question, what advice would you have for moms who are really struggling with, with how to say it? You know, I mean, it, it does take a lot of courage to tell your family that you are struggling. Go ahead, Mary. I, I think just, just say it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, um, if you and your spouse have had an argument, you, you don't want to share about that, right? It, there's things that our children appropriately can hear. And there's things they sit and shouldn't. But I think it's just owning your feelings. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling tad, uh, tired. I'm a little scared today. You know, uh, I was listening to Dr. Fauci and I learned some things and I'm trying to figure out how I can be okay with that. We're going to be okay, right? Mm -hmm. But owning the feelings, and we don't have to own the big ones. Like we can do sad, mad, glad, and scared. Let's just do the basic ones um, and just identify it with reassurance as well, as a mom's going to do, right? Because we're going to wrap that up in a way that mm -hmm. says, but we're going to be okay as a family. Right. And Dolores, what mm -hmm. advice would you have for um, young women that perhaps don't have a family yet, uh, but they still need to find someone to speak with, to talk to? Uh, you know, how, how do they approach that with their parents or their friends? I think absolutely the same way, is be honest about what's going on. Yeah. Because if, if, especially if you're talking to people that know you, right. they're, gonna, they're going to see through that. So own the, just like Mary said, own the feelings, acknowledge the feelings, and how the, how the feelings are, how, what they're affecting you with. And, 
you know, as, as you know, especially for those, for young women who are looking to, you know, to start a family or looking, you know, looking down the road of, you know, I do want to have a family of my own, then, you know, this may be that the time as there, as we're all spending time, more time at home and in some, in some ways more time alone, really, you know, maybe this is the time to look at when I, when I become a parent, these are some of the things that I want. These are some of the things that I want my kids to know. I, I want them to know that they're loved and cared for, but I want them to know that their mom is real and that moms have feelings and I'm not always gonna get it right. How do I do that? Yeah, good. Um, I think the last year has been marked by loss for a lot mm. of us, uh, perhaps. Uh, you lost your business, you lost your job, or you lost a loved one. Unfortunately, that's happened to so many of us. Uh, what is your advice for navigating through those feelings and, and working through that? Hmm. The thing, one of the things about loss is that when you, when you suffer a loss, it brings back other losses that you've suffered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And allow yourself to acknowledge that. Give, give yourself that time to cry, to be angry, to be numb, to be, to be confused and not know what to feel. Exactly. And, and find a way, a ritual that's going to bring you some sort of closure because we can't attend services in, you know, in person. There, there are friends of mine that have had um, funeral services via Zoom, and right. they were surprised at how well it worked. Yeah. And you know, be, still being able to see someone face to face, even if they're not in the room with you, was so powerful. And if you if you can't bring yourself to do that, figure out a way for you and maybe those that are close to you to find a ritual that's going to bring you closure. And when you're going through that ritual, um, when especially when you've lost someone to focus on the fact that, not, not just the fact that you lost this person, but focus on the positive effects right. that they've had on your life. You know, how did they, how did this person help you grow? How did this person always know how to get you out of your worst of your worst moods? You know, think, think about and focus and hold tight to those things also. And Dolores, let me mm -hmm. ask you one more question. Um, when you're talking about thinking through all that and celebrating those those joys from that person, or perhaps it's a job that you're thinking about, uh, you, you know, you can think through that. What are some strategies that you might suggest for uh, working through that, other than just having all the thoughts in your head? Write it. I, write it down. I mean, use art, poetry, drawing, spoken word, songs, you know, music. Use the talents that you have, and let it let it be personal but let it out you're you're absolutely right don't let it just sit in your head because sometimes when we get so self-focused we can get ourselves into a really bad place exactly. get it get it out of your head but let it come from your heart yeah mary do you have anything to add to that to, to well, gr grief is a process, and that's something I think we forget as well. We want it to be an event. It's, it happened, and I need to move forward. I need to get over it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you hear frequently people say. Um, and allow the process, and the memories are so important. Um, you mentioned art and writing, dance, journaling, um, anything that comes out. And speaking from the heart means you can't do one and done. It's going to take a little bit of time. It may be, again, a little bit here and a little bit there. And you'll know when it's moved because the pain has shifted. The pain doesn't go away. Whether it's I've lost my job and I feel resentful and angry about that and fearful, mm -hmm. or I've lost a loved one, that pain still is going to rear up. And pain is what we should be feeling, hurt and so forth. But... Um, doing something with all that. Memories are so important. There's a reason with death we have so many rituals. Um, but I think it's important with the loss of a relationship or the loss mm -hmm. of work or is to kind of look too about what the memories are. Not mm -hmm. everything is always bad, right? Mm -hmm. Everything comes with a good and a bad and acknowledging what was good and walking away with that is really hopeful as well. 
And Mary, let me, let me ask you as well, um, working with children uh, in the school system all the time, sometimes we hear it, I'm a former counselor, Right. Uh, children will come to us and say, you, you know, I'm feeling this, I'm not sure how to, to uh, I, don't, I don't understand my feelings. Uh, but what would you ex um, suggest for moms out there who can tell their child is suffering, uh, but they're just not sure how to approach that? Ask, right? What? Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going on. Draw with your student. Student, your your student. It's your own child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just draw. You know what's going on. Let's draw together. That brings out a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to utilize the schools. Every public school in San Antonio has professional school counselors who are trained. We're the first level mental health professionals on the campus, mm -hmm. and we're trained to work with families and students through that as well. Whether they're virtual or in person, Zoom has worked just fine for being able to provide counseling services as well. It's been a pleasant surprise, I guess, mm -hmm. as we talk about pleasant memories through all this, that it's going to work as well. Uh, students, uh, children don't always know how to identify feelings. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't need the big ones. We don't have to talk about despair and we don't have to talk right. about guilt. But sad, mad, glad, and scared are, are just basic enough to get the conversation going. Mm -hmm. If they're little bitties, have them draw faces, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you go to the emergency room and they have the pain faces. Mm -hmm. um, and then just tell me about that. Uh, just the question, tell me about that. And they're going to tell you what they're ready to tell. They don't always withhold. They don't always know, and it has to process as well. Dolores, let me ask mm -hmm. you, what, what about families that may have uh, young adults, teenagers that, you know, I, I taught high school for a long time, and sometimes you see that clam up and just don't want to talk about things. You know, how do families work with the, some, if they have teens or older children? Well, I, I think for, for the, the families with teenagers, it can be especially difficult because, here you've got this, you know, your teen <laughs> whose friends are really the most important part of their life exactly. and they don't have that right, right now. And not in the way that they're used to and probably not the way that they want. So they, you know, they're, they may feel stuck with, uh, you know, I've got to spend all this time with my family. And as a parent, I really think that sitting down with your teenager and letting, just reminding them, I, I am here for you. I know, I know that this year has been nothing like we, if you'd asked me five years ago, if we were gonna spend an, a year at home, I would have, I would not have believed that, but here we are. Right. And I want you to remember that I am here for you and I do want the best for you. And I respect your need to talk to your friends, but my, in my heart of hearts, in my, in my mother's heart, if you will, I want to make sure that you are taken care of. And that means that I want to, I want to help you deal with whatever feelings you're having. And some of them may be difficult. Mm -hmm. And Mary, you brought up a really good point earlier about, oh, let's draw about it, or let's, let's draw, or get some coloring books. Because often when children and adolescents have the, difficult things to talk about they don't want to they don't want to look at you they don't mm -hmm. want to make eye contact and so having the you know the deck of cards or the game or the coloring book there and available as something to distract you and not have to to feel as vulnerable as looking at you face to face a lot can come out that way and you know as you know when speaking from speak, speaking to parents about that um remember that you know when you ask that teenager what's going on with you you there there may be some things that you hear that you don't like <laughs> right. and that are a a big surprise to you and it's okay to be surprised let them let, let your kids talk as as long as they want to and you know you may have to take some space to process what you've heard as the sure. parent first and then you know but come back to that and hey I, you know you said a couple of things that i would really like to find out more about when is a good time that when can we you and I sit again and and open this back up and I'd like to ask you Amir we can start with you um, you know what advice do you have for women that may think life is wonderful and I, I don't have any of these problems you know how, how would you sit back and reflect and kind of work through your feelings uh, and then perhaps if you need to seek help we'll talk about that in just a moment but how do you how would you what, what is your advice for that well I think some women in their situation may have adjusted but 
have weathered okay. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. some people like to be alone. I don't know many of those people, but, mm -hmm. um, but even in the best of times, there's always a place for self-reflection. So um, my very best friend Pinterest sometimes mm -hmm. um, has, journal prompts, right, mm -hmm. for single women, for dog lovers, whatever, and just allowing yourself the opportunity to start writing. Mm -hmm. um, and whether you do it by bullet points and or you just write big words, whatever that needs to look like, as a way to just explore what the year's been like, mm -hmm. um, what maybe set goals for what's coming up to reflect on what you want to do as a do-over. It doesn't mean you had an awful year, but there's always a place for reflection and contemplation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Dolores, do you have any advice to add to that? I think that, you know, just asking, asking yourself, or, you know, if, if, you're, if you've got that, that friend that's saying, oh, you know, everything's great, really, how did you, how did you get to that place? There you go. Mm -hmm. Because if, the, if things really are great, maybe you can help me get to great. And I'd, I'd like to ask you guys about uh, resources because uh, a lot of us may, realize that we are struggling, but we're not sure where to go. Uh, some of us don't have the friend group to reach out to that are you know, very isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what are some resources and how do you find those resources? Well, the, you know, the internet is a, it, it is a great place to find resources, therapist.net. Um, you know, you, that, that will give you a list of therapists that are in the community. If you, you know, if you are at work, um, you know, check your um, insurance for your work, there may be an employee assistance program mm -hmm. that will offer short term, you know, usually three to five sessions, and you can make those sessions be about anything, anything. Um, you, you know, the the um, the Center for Healthcare Services where I work, we offer services for children as young as three, all the way through all the way through adulthood, honestly. Um, and we've got you know clinics that are in different parts of the city. Um, and for families or you know children or adults that don't have funding we can help to get that funding started um, the children's bereavement center mm -hmm. here in town um, for those families that have suffered loss and are and are really struggling to get through that that is an excellent resource for them and those are the ones but, that are coming off the right mm -hmm. just off the top, top of my head <laughs> the internet is certainly an opportunity Many employees do not realize they have an employee assistance program. And so just starting with your benefits office, if you're employed and see what is offered, um, employee assistance, EAPs are, like you said, three to five sessions. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised, many times that's really all you need is, mm -hmm. is a little place to kind of let it, it out and someone to guide mm -hmm. your thinking and your outcomes. Um, Talkspace is taken off like wildfire during this time and that's mm -hmm. another that's an online therapy place um, that many insurance companies are paying for now telehealth has again last mm -hmm. year we would have been like telehealth we would never do counseling by telehealth and here we are mm -hmm. and with that means the opportunity is to seek counseling not just in san antonio you could hook with someone who may be in another state but is authorized to practice here in in Texas, so you're not limited anymore to what you can drive to, mm -hmm. um, and that's a huge opportunity. And I think faith communities offer a lot of support. Whatever your faith foundation is or your spiritual foundation, is many times that's a place to start as well. Um, our spiritual self has been rattled uh, during this last year, um, but it's a huge part of who we are too when we talk about balance and integration, acknowledging that, and so, you don't necessarily have to belong to any of those, whether it's a synagogue or a mosque or a church, but they offer that support as well. And I think it's a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, that I'd like to talk about is uh, your significant other uh, husbands. Uh, the last year has been a lot of stress for a lot of families. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how, what, what is your advice for women that may be struggling in their relationship, whether that's a husband at home or perhaps uh, you know, a significant other that doesn't live with you, but how do you navigate through that and try to work that out you know, with themselves and with the relationship? Oh, wow, that, that's, that's a big question because <laughs> the, the foundation of any relationship is communication. And again, it, like we've said several times, be honest, be graceful, and be real. Because 
if you have a significant other, wh whether they live with you or they don't, they know when you're faking it. They know when something's wrong. Um, and, you know, and, and they should also be asking and telling you the same things like, hey, what's, you know, what's going on? This tone of voice is really not like you. Is everything okay? And especially, I think it, there is a special kind of tension if both spouses are working from home mm -hmm. because that's, a, it's another one of those situations where home is everything. And I don't have my, I don't have that space that I usually have with people that aren't you. And so if I get frustrated with something at work, something that you're usually not even involved in, there is a very good chance that I'm gonna take that work frustration out on you. And that's not, you know, and realizing that, that even emotionally, we, well, especially emotionally, we've gotta set some good boundaries. And if, when, you, when you've done it, because we all have taken something out on someone unintentionally but when you know you've done it own it and you know I'm really sorry about that I've you know I've had a really rough day at work can we you know can we start over and you know hitting the rewind button on a on an intense conversation is a good thing because if you're both upset and you just start firing words back and forth with each other you've probably said something that oh wow I shouldn't have said that can we just hit the rewind? Because what I really want to say is this. I do appreciate the fact that we both, that, you know, that, that we are here, that we do have each other, but sometimes it's really hard because we're not, we're, we're, we are not remaining connected with our friend group as much as I would like. And so you're getting, you're getting everything. Whereas before we had more of a support group of people that, that, could get us through that so that together this is kind of our place of peace. I think acknowledging that it's hard for them too, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're feeling, they're going to feel something that matches that. Yeah. It may come differently from them. I'm not married. I have two dogs. We've weathered okay, the dog uh, owner relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but I have thought about what would it be like to have a spouse in the house and we have to share workspace and you know, your work may end up being in the bedroom and so now you don't even have a, a, a separate place that's just for you as a couple. Um, and I've watched my friends kind of weather through that as well. Um, if you're working together in the home, that, that becomes an issue. But if one's working outside the home and the other's in the home with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. So you've been all day with that and you want them to come home and rescue you is really what I believe we're looking for. Um, but communication is the most important thing. Being honest, um, accepting that you're not going to do it well all the time, and grace is a really, really big, I like you said do-over, right? Let's do a rewind. Um, mm -hmm. The pressure is hard, mm -hmm. um, and I know many relationships haven't weathered this very well. Um, but I've also heard of relationships that have gotten stronger through this, mm -hmm. and I think each side has had to be willing to... Um, lay down their porcupine quills a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And b be willing to consider the relationship dance from a different perspective. And it comes with that humility mm -hmm. um, of, of just saying, you know what, we're gonna do this together and I don't know what it's gonna look like. Um, as a woman, I think for me, I would have, the first thing I would have to teach myself is just be quiet, mm -hmm. you know, and just listen first uh, without having to solve it because a lot of times in the relationship is the mom Mm -hmm. or the wife, I want to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I know when a lot of people say 2020, we think pandemic, right? That's the first word that comes to our mind. Uh, but 2021, I think is also, to me, a lot about hope. So what is your advice uh, for moving forward, for focusing on that hope and not focusing on what we just survived? Well, even though, I mean, it has been a year and it has, been, it has been difficult in a lot of ways. I think that one of the things that 2020 taught us is that people can, that we can support each other and that this is, a, a pandemic has a beginning and an end. The end might not have come nearly as quickly as we wanted, but there is an end to this. And once that, you know, 
when we get to that end, is, are things going to go back to normal as we knew them? Who knows? Right. But focus on, you know, when the pandemic is done and you, and you, have, you have more choices and you have more freedoms, think about how are, you, how are you going to use those to keep you strong, to keep you moving forward, and to allow you to be in that kind of the new the new place that the growth that you've experienced through the difficulty of 2020 has brought you to. And use that growth as a springboard forward, right? Mm -hmm. And hope it is going to end. The pandemic will end, but it won't end where we ended our normal before. There will be a right. different place that goes there. And we have seen a lot of really incredible things happen. We have seen the way families have pitched in for other families. We've seen where individuals have come to bat for others financially, emotionally, giving things. Um, it feels to me like we've seen more of that. And I think during a time where uh, the pandemic has forced us all to kind of come a little bit more even, um, it gives people an opportunity to rise up and look outside of themselves. And so the hope is gonna come from what are we going to do next but hope also comes from what did we do well? This mm -hmm. part may not have done okay, but what did we do okay? What wonderful things have happened? What thing am I gonna hold on to going mm -hmm. forward that I'm not willing to give up this time? Mm -hmm. That I've let it slide in the past. I've thought it wasn't important, but it's, it's become better. Uh, it hasn't become perfect, right? Um, but it's become better, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, do you guys have any closing remarks? Is there anything that we did not discuss that you feel it's important for someone to walk away with today? I think when it comes to your mental health, treat it like you do your physical health. Because if, you, if something's wrong with you physically, we tend not to ignore those things. Um, but, but when it comes to mental health, there I know that there's a lot of stigma surrounding mental health, but your mental health is as important to your overall health as your physical health. And so maybe with that is thinking if, if it, the idea of calling it mental health, because there does come that stigma, emotional wellness, wellness, right? right mm -hmm. Is you can call it whatever you want to call it, but acknowledge that the physical piece is important, the emotional piece mm -hmm. is important, and acknowledging all of that together is what's going to keep us whole um, and that whole wellness gives us the strength we need to move into each day uh, so i like what you're saying about that dolores is acknowledging that the mental health matters and the stigma is there but we can also choose how we're going to wear that identity um, and i don't minimize the challenges that individuals have um, but we're not embarrassed to say we wear glasses, right? We're not embarrassed to say perhaps we need a hearing aid. And we no longer have to be embarrassed to say, I need a little emotional self, uh, support or some mental health support. Mm -hmm. um, I just need that to be able to move forward. Yeah. And I am strong. I think women struggle with, I need to be strong for everybody. Mm -hmm. Asking for help doesn't make you not strong. It just continues to make you human. Yeah. Right, and sometimes you're your strongest moments are your most vulnerable. There you go, exactly. Great advice, ladies. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and thank everyone at home for joining us. I want to thank all of the amazing women on the commission for putting their time and energy into this virtual event. Without them, we would not be able to do this. It is very important that we talk openly as a community about mental health and how we are directly affected by it. We must also serve as a community of growth and understanding. Know that as a commission, we are here for you and ready to help any way that we can. Thank you for your time and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or thoughts about addressing these issues. Please follow us on Facebook for more information and resources. <music>